I will be covering the best way to approach your acne for long-term clear skin, how hormonal acne works, and what gut health has to do with your pimples. I don't know if you've heard people talk about gut health yet, but yeah, it's, it's super important. Cool. Also feel free to pop any questions that you have below, and after I teach you everything there is to know about acne, I will go through and answer them all at the end. So, who am I? My name's Madison Don't, and I am a biologist. So I've completed my science degree, and then I went on and studied teaching, and for the last four years I have been a um, senior biology and math teacher for, yeah, like I said, four years. So after my struggles with acne, I decided to go back to uni and I'm now studying to become a naturopath. So I'll be in my second year next year, but obviously I've already had my science degree, so I already know how the body works, um, but now I'm trying to learn a bit more about the natural medicine side of things. So yeah, on my way to doing that in a couple of months, I will also be a qualified nutrition coach. So that is really exciting. So let's talk about what acne actually is, what causes it, the natural root cause approach, um, and yeah, all that good stuff. So the skin is actually an excretory organ. And when I say excretory organ, it's things that excrete the unwanted molecules and toxins. It's not always toxins, um, just out of the body. So like, for example, if you've got too much salt or whatever, it can come out like in, in your urine. Um, so in saying that, other excretory organs, just so that you can picture it, are like the kidneys, the liver, um, the large intestine is one as well, um, and the lungs, because it like gets rid of the carbon dioxide that we don't need. So your skin is the largest one. Um, and another important thing to note is that symptoms are just our body's way to restore uh, balance or to heal. Like that's our body trying to heal. So we uh, traditionally taught to kind of not like the symptoms that come up, but they're actually our body doing what it's supposed to do. Um, so for example, when we're cold and we shiver, um, that is actually tiny little muscle contractions on, in our skin. Um, and it's our body's way of kind of like jumping up and down to get us warm without consciously jumping up and down. Um, so yeah, that's kind of like a little reaction. Shivering is like the symptom. Another example is like headaches. When we're dehydrated, um, we've learned to ha hate the headache. We've learned to kind of block the pain receptors with Panadol so that we can't feel it. Um, but that doesn't actually change the fact that you're dehydrated. Um, so that can actually be incredibly damaging being that de dehydrated if you just keep taking Panadol um, because a lot of the reactions in the body need water. They're called hydrolysis, hydrolysis reactions. So hydro for water. Um, so yeah, just like the headache is our body's way to try and communicate to us that we need more water. Acne is our body's way to kind of scream out to us um, and tell us that something's wrong internally. Now, unfortunately, there are seven possible root causes and seven things that could be wrong internally um, to cause your skin to try and shout out for help. Um, and we don't have time to go through all of them tonight because I'm just doing hormones and gut health. But if you want to know a little bit more about that, then um, I do also have a root cause video that explains all of that on my YouTube. Now let's go into um, the, the root cause approach. So this is the only way to address your skin long term without having to rely on medication and prescriptions. So yeah, let's go into how you actually are supposed to fix it long term by addressing the root cause. So I want you to picture you've got a leak in the pipes under your sink. You might put a bucket there initially, but you wouldn't just keep putting buckets under the leak long term to avoid your house flooding because you would actually get the pipe fixed. Um, so the buckets in this case are the prescriptions and the plumber is like a naturopath. Okay, so they're the ones like fixing the pipe so that it doesn't just keep happening. So you can fix it yourself, um, but most of us, I'm assuming, wouldn't really know how to fix a kitchen sink properly. Um, and same goes with acne. So that's kind of why we seek help for the naturopaths and why even being a scientist and having an appreciation for technology and like I'm still pro-vaccine, not point, off topic, but I'm now training to be a naturopath. Um, so it's, I very much value that philosophy. Um, so just to be clear, pharmaceuticals cover up the symptoms so that they themselves are not life-threatening um, and so they're not bothering you anymore. So pharmaceuticals can be really important in emergencies and when things are life-threatening. Um, but they don't actually fix the cause, so the problem 
keeps coming up. Um, so yeah, when you're when you're on those pharmaceuticals, when you get prescribed those things from the doctors, your acne's still going to be there, um, or the core, the root cause of your acne is going to be there. Sorry. So let's talk about how we would actually go about balancing our hormones. So what is the most common way that people balance their hormones to get rid of acne? Yeah. So if your hormones are out of balance. First thing people do, let's balance them. So I'm seeing some natural ones there, which is awesome. You guys know what I'm getting at. Um, but I'm also seeing a lot um, of the pill, and that's exactly what I wanted you to say. Um, so it was a bit of a trick question, because when people think, okay, how am I going to balance my hormones? They think, let's go on the pill. But oh, the pill doesn't actually balance your sex hormones. It actually turns them off. So the body stops making them because it doesn't need to. It's getting the synthetic ones for free. So why would it use its energy to make more of something that it doesn't need? It's getting it for free. Um, so it's just like if someone went and cleaned your house, like why would you go around after them and clean it again? Like it's just a waste of energy. Um, so this means that when you try and go off the pill, your, your body has to relearn how to make these hormones again in the right amounts. Um, and it does take some time for your body to figure things out as you would expect. So if you want to learn more about how your hormones are supposed to work, I encourage you to go and head over and watch my video on the menstrual cycle when I actually go through the hormone chart. Um, I've taught this a lot of times. Um, so I would like to think that I made that video really easy to understand. So if you want to finally understand your menstrual cycle and what's going on during the month, um, that I've got all of that there. But I'm not just going to leave you hanging on balancing the hormones. A lot of the things mentioned are really good. So um, I use maca powder as well. Um, oh, Chastis, it's actually called Vitex. I don't actually know how to... Chastis tree? Oh my god. Um, yeah, so I don't know how to pronounce that one. But diet and supplements, also the natural way. Um, so that's really good. So where can you take a hormone test and how much does it cost? So because it's important that these tests are read correctly you have to go through a naturopath to take them. The GPs don't do them. Um, so the accurate hormone tests are either saliva or urine tests. So if you ask your GP for a blood test on hormones, I can promise you that it likely won't show much. And mine definitely did it. didn't. It showed um, one level was a bit high, um, but it just not extensive at all, not enough to go by to actually fix the problem and the root cause. Um, so unfortunately, the hormone tests are not cheap. They are around $200, um, sometimes more, and that money doesn't go to the naturopath. So that naturopath, they're not overcharging you or anything. It goes directly to the companies that run the tests. So you couldn't get it cheaper even if you went direct and tried. Um, trust me, I have a student account to one of those companies where you can order tests, and even to order my own test, it would cost over $200. Um, so yeah, it actually costs the practitioners that much to order the test. So you would be paying for that and then you would be paying for the initial naturopathic consultation to order the test and then the follow-up appointment for them to read the test and give you an action plan. Um, but when you think about it, so many people go on Roaccutane for their acne. Roaccutane is expensive, has a lot of side effects. I have a video on that too. I don't like Roaccutane. Um, but you have to pay for the dermatologist appointments as well, which can be just as expensive. So when people say naturopaths are too expensive, it, it is really worth investing your money into that. Um, so in my experience, I've done a lot of research um, and a lot of guess and check work with my own hormones and acne. And even with all of the knowledge that I have and just by looking at different the different symptoms, it's almost impossible to know exactly where your what your hormones are doing and what they need. Um, so sometimes the symptoms of too high of a hormone are very similar to the symptoms of too low of that exact same hormone. So you might actually be doing the opposite of what you're supposed to do if you read it wrong. So you do have to be careful and a hormone test is just so worth it. Um, so yeah, like I said, I've tried the guessing based on the symptoms approach for a year now um, and I've tried to avoid paying the hundreds it costs to get it tested. But even though biology has helped me clear it, I'm still my root cause is not sorted and I do still need to kind of sort out my hormones. 
And so I am deciding to lead by example um, and I have actually put aside a couple of hundred dollars and booked into a naturopath to get my hormones tested um, and to get it sorted once and for all. So I'm actually so excited for that. Bring on 2020. Um, but yeah, it's that's pretty much the only way to get to that root cause. Um, but obviously, by all means, try um, and do trial and error if you like. Um, and yeah, so gut health. What is the microbiome? You guys have probably heard of this word before, or maybe some of you haven't, but the microbiome um, is the microorganisms in your intestines. So that includes bacteria. It also includes some other microorganisms. For the sake of this, we're just going to refer to it as bacteria. So we have good and bad bacteria hanging out in there. And the bad bacteria isn't a problem as long as it doesn't kind of... Um, you know, break the intestinal wall and get into our bloodstream and cause other problems. So yeah, it's, it's fine to have a balance. It's fine to have some bad bacteria in there as long as the good outweighs the bad. So we actually have more bacteria in there than we do human cells on our whole body. Um, so it's a ridiculous number. You guys are actually more bacteria than you are human. Um, so yeah, they, um, antibiotics, they don't just kill the bad bacteria they kill them all. So it's not selective. So when you do take antibiotics, yes, you're getting rid of the bad bacteria, but you're also killing your good bacteria, which are fundamental for health. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a really important distinction that you just don't think about. Um, and so I want to explain to you guys leaky gut a little bit. Um, so leaky gut is when the bad bacteria override the good bacteria and it can actually mean, um, so the overpopulation can mean the bad bacteria actually start um, attacking the intestinal wall and ruining the integrity of that wall. Um, so what leaky gut can do is also any inflammation caused by that attack or the overpopulation. So let's say that these are your intestinal cells. Okay. So if they are inflamed, they push against each other, okay? So they're inflamed and they push against each other and they create these gaps. So that's why it's called leaky gut. There's actually a proper term for it, but we're just going to call it leaky gut. But yeah, so that means that anything like sugar or any toxins in your diet or anything like that, even the bad bacteria themselves can just slip straight through the gaps and they just go straight into your bloodstream and our blood goes everywhere, all around our body. So that means that it can cause problems, problems in your gut and incorrect diet that cause leaky gut and inflammation, cause problems all around the body because it is connected with the bloodstream. So um, yeah, that's leaky gut. And it means that sugar especially can cause a really big issue. Gluten's another one. Um, and that's why when you think about it, I spent a year and a half on antibiotics um, and that killed all of my good bacteria as well. So um, when I started taking probiotics, I noticed a huge difference. So there was biology and probiotics, and that's literally all I did between those before and after pictures. A lot of people are like, but there must be more. Like, did you change your diet? No, I was already eating healthy. That's all I did, just biology and probiotics. And I used to think probiotics were a waste of money. Even when they give you antibiotics, the doctors, they're like, take your probiotics. And I was like, what do they do? That's a waste of money. No, I'm already paying for the antibiotics. Um, but yeah, I've had so many of my followers since educating them on this, they've done that and they've started taking probiotics and they've noticed a huge difference. So um, yeah, a lot of people don't even think to try that. Um, but yeah, so other things that you can do to support your gut is eat a high fiber diet because good, bac um, good bacteria like fiber, they feed off fiber, whereas bad bacteria feed off sugar um, and other things as well. Um, so you want to make sure you're eating a high fiber diet um, and therefore reducing your sugar intake can also, you can see a huge difference in that too. Um, as well as drinking three liters of water because this supports your excretory organs. Um, like very clearly the kidneys, because the more water you drink, obviously you can see a difference in the color of your urine. Um, and like I said, water is important in so many reactions around the body and those reactions your cells need to do in order to heal. Um, so you just really need to make sure water's a big one. It's so simple, it's free, but people miss this step. Um, so yeah, your body needs that to heal. Um, and Diet is everything. If you get anything from this talk today, you really need to make sure that you're eating the right foods for your body and to support that healing. Um, so just like you wouldn't pour chocolate sauce into your car's fuel tank, um, why do that to your body?
Um, and I also want to re um, just emphasize for a second, not go into it, but I just want to emphasize the ridiculous changes that stress makes to our body as well. So we can enter a state of fight or flight even just by getting a bill in the mail. Um, so it's really, really important that you go check out my stress series too if you think that stress might be causing some of that. And half of us don't even know we're stressed. Um, but it explains how stress, if, like all types of stress, anything that causes worry can actually cause whole systems to shut down, like just shut down. So I think like it stress does more than even I initially realized. So that is a really important one to check on. Um, yeah, I think pretty much just on my YouTube channel, I also just love week every week i post a new video teaching you guys about your bodies and educating you on the different um you know important um things about root causes things about probiotics about gut health about hormones just a bunch of good stuff and it's just so important to educate yourselves on your health um not just for acne but even in the future when if you get sick with anything else you just have that education there and you know how your body works so you can actually make educated um, decisions. So if you haven't already and you would like to keep getting all of this um, education, then um, I am Madison Don't on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, so you can just search that there. But I hope that this live has been super educational for you guys and you have gotten so much out of it. And I hope to see you around.